Hey, this is Dave from ERC, and I think it's time to go over some of that long-awaited flight footage of the maiden test flights of the Volantix Ranger 2000. So to get started, I want to talk about the two launches. You'll see Barney launching the plane and me doing the controls, but you'll notice there's a little dip when it first takes off. So let's go ahead and look at that and what we did to correct it. Okay, tell me how much thrust is that. They got a little bit of flaps on there. And you got a little more forward wind this time, too. Yeah. So I'll give them plenty of throttle and we'll go for it. Get there when you're ready. Yeah! I knew that would do it. When you throttled it up, could you see it turning in my hand? It got a good bit of, good bit of torque. So you notice on the first flight there was quite a bit of dip down. I didn't have any elevator flaps or anything going on there. Second flight we added flaps and that seemed to make a huge difference. I don't think this plane dips quite as much as some of the previous models so it works pretty good. I like it. Uh, next flights I'll probably go ahead and add up elevator and I'll have a video for that. I think it's already up how to add up elevator, put a switch on your radio. So now let's go on and talk about some of the aspects such as battery voltage, satellite count, throttle and speed, uh, probably the link quality on the RSSI, the Pixhawk stabilization, the prop, the camera, the video feed, how that worked, and of course the home arrow and GPS, how that worked without a compass because they don't have a compass on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at those things and I'll get off camera and we'll get into that flight video. This is me RC. Okay, I'm using a 3300 milliamp hour four cell battery and you can see on my first flight it went about seven and a half minutes and I got 1555 volts left. So that's quite a bit of battery left. Second flight went about six and a half minutes and had 1536. So very efficient on the battery. So these tests are being done with an 8x6 APC prop. When I started out I was kind of heavy on the throttle, 66 percent, and I was drawing almost 11 amps of current. Later on I learned that I could throttle down to about 31 percent and still go about 35 miles an hour and only using around 3-4 amps of current. So very efficient there with that 8x6. May upgrade later to an 8x8. Eight eight. My satellite count when I first launched was about 18 and once I got in the air it improved a little bit. The Bango GPS, it's a Pixhawk version, worked very well with this plane. I think the foil under it helped too and switching to the digital brand video transmitter also helped so I'm happy. Looking at the link quality or RSSI, this is from the Easy UHF. It seemed to be doing great with the monopole antenna that I was using. I didn't see any problems. Some people said I should have a dipole but I think the monopole will be fine for the ranges that I'm going to be flying. So I'm happy with the Easy UHF signal and I'm using a JR module on my radio and it works good. I had the Pixhawk stabilization off to start with and you can see the plane is kind of rocky and the choppy breezes and then I turned it to stabilized and things seemed to smooth right out and I think the stabilizer worked just great. Looking at the GPS home arrow which is in the upper middle of the OSD you can see it's pointing straight towards home which is down on the ground that's us down there and then as I turn away, you see a little flicker as I go over the top of us. That's just the video feed from the antennas. But the home arrow stays true, so I don't think I really need a compass at all on the plane. And I can probably try a return to home in one of the next flights and see how that works, because I believe everything seems to be working as far as the GPS. Now the video feed seemed to be working great. The digital 1.3 gigahertz transmitter performed flawlessly. It didn't interfere with the GPS. The video quality was good, although I think the Sparrow camera is a little bit flickery and I'm probably going to change that out. This was a sample that I got from Runcam and I think they've improved in some of their other cameras. So I'll be switching that out for sure. 
But other than that, I was really happy with the video quality. There's some vibration from the prop. I probably need to try a different prop, maybe do a little better job balancing the prop. But overall, I thought it worked really well. Okay, you're down to about 25. Whoa, you're down to about 15 feet there. I want to thank my friend Jim for recording the ground video with his iPad and also using my camera. And I also want to thank my friend Barney for giving me the hand launches and advice on the takeoffs. It's always fun flying with your friends and getting that camaraderie. That's what the hobby is all about. I hope you'll stay tuned for some more flight video because there will be some more. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notify checkbox. Thanks for watching.